Um, welcome everybody to Diversity in the City 2. We've got a lovely bunch of speakers here coming come this evening and we're going to get straight to our first speaker who is Dr. Paula Serafini. And uh, she's a, a cultural and politi politics scholar and educator at the Research Institute for Cultural and Media uh, Economies. She's very busy publishing, she's got two books that have just recently come out and they give you a good sense of her work. So just earlier this year, of her, of her book Performance Action, The Politics of Art Activism came out. And she's also a co-editor of an interesting book called Artwork, Art, Labour and Activism. So with no further ado, welcome. Thank you. Uh, I'm which is the U.S. Investor's uh, Research Institute for Cultural and Media Economies. And there we look at issues such as creative labour and issues of justice, diversity, and inclusion in the cultural industry. Um, so what we try to do is study what's happening in these industries, try to understand what the barriers are, what the problems are, what the opportunities are also for social justice and social change, um, to try to change things through research, through policy engagement, but then also to engage with the sector to do projects in partnership so that we can also have an impact um, right now on what's happening and trying to better the, the opportunities of the sector. Um, so what I was thinking of doing was um, sharing some information about some of the projects that the Institute has done recently, but that we're working on at the moment, um, with particular focus on diversity and in different ways. But I also want to start by um, offering a kind of brief summary um, of um, what the issues concerning diversity are in the cultural sector. So what are the challenges? And this applies to you know, local level, regional level, and national level as well. Um, so what about that? Um, the arts and cultural sector is usually inspired as liberal, open and diverse, but the reality is that that is far from the truth. BAME and working class people and people with disabilities are still underrepresented in the sector, uh, as are women in some positions, and this is also reflecting the kinds of positions that different people have managed to get. Um, and this is due to many different reasons. So one of the reasons has to do with perspectives and worldviews that condition the content of cultural production. If traditional scripts are written from a white, male, able-bodied, middle-class perspective, for instance, these are conditions who gets employed and cast to tell their stories, to share their stories. The lack of diversity of perspectives in content um, also um, leads to other issues, such as stereotyping and typecasting. But then the other main reason why there are barriers to diversity in the sector is the kind of working conditions that we often find in the great industries. So for instance, um, intense short-term contracts and social hours and the expectation of free labor that is usually framed as an like opportunity, you know, exposure, cultural capital, all of these terms that we usually hear, uh, mean that often these jobs are not accessible to those with low income backgrounds, uh, those that have caring responsibilities, etc. Those who don't have a safety net. And finally, work in the sector is also very reliant on who we know, you know, what you know, what you know, what you know. So again, if you don't want to go to a particular neighborhood, if you don't want to go to a white family school, if you're missing out on the connections that are going to help you advance your career, and this, that's quite particular to the um, So, I think, yeah, I think I'm going to do some three projects right now. But actually, I want to see, can I ask you a favor? Can you bring me the, um, the bag with the things? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I got some literature and some help with that. We have some of the projects that we're working on, um, which we're working on today for a bit. Maybe I'll show them around after a while. Um, so one of the projects that we've been working on, yeah, thank you, um, is a document, uh, which was a collaboration with a Contemporary Visual Arts Network in East Midlands, and that's um, an organization that works with visual artists and supports the careers of visual artists in the region. And uh, this project follows six artists that were based in different cities, so Leicester, Northampton, um, Derby, Nottingham, etc. And they follow them for six, uh, sorry, for two years and try to have an inside perspective of what it's like to be an artist in the region. So artists were expected to document their practice, uh, they were also interviewed for film. There's some films that you can watch online for each of the artists talking about their careers. And what we did from Kami was to look at this question of what is it like to be an artist from a kind of critical perspective and looking a bit as well um, at the experiences but also at the structural barriers perhaps that sometimes 
constrain certain types of people, certain groups from advancing their careers in the arts and that enable others who, are, uh, who have other advantages. Um, so one of the outputs that we have from that project is this, which is a kind of, we still don't know how to call it, it's a poster, but it's also a book there, and we call it on being an artist. And it basically tries to demystify a bit the idea of what an artistic career looks like, what artists do, and who can be an artist. And some of the issues of, of um, structural barriers are mentioned here, but there's also other more general issues as, such as how do artists spend their days, and trying to, to show the reality that, for instance, someone can be a professional artist but also hold a full-time job. There's different types of artists and, and it's not the same for everyone. So we have some here you can take as well. And there's a poster on the other side here, which features work from the different artists. Then, yeah, the second um, project I wanted to mention is called Where Am I? Being New World Models and Leaders in the Performing Arts. This project was a collaboration with the theatre company Maya Productions and it explored the implications of the underrepresentation of BA and workers in the performing art for workers' careers and aspirations in the sector. So it's basically saying if there are no BA and people represented in the performing arts, how does that affect young BA and actors or performers that want to be part of that sector? Um, so, yeah, it asks, for instance, if the arts and culture represent overwhelmingly white, middle class, male, aesthetics, histories, values, and thinking, how are BAME workers to value their own ideas, stories, and visions? What would a world look and feel like if leaders in the arts and culture came from all kinds of backgrounds? Would this encourage a more diverse arts workers? So, one of the outputs from this project, in addition to also academic outputs, is this guide. And the guide is called um, Black and Asian Minority Ethnic Role Models and Leaders in the Performing Arts. And it's kind of a very brief um, summary of some of the issues that the project looks at. And it has recommendations both for young aspiring uh, performers as well as for organizations and kind of suggesting some ways in which organizations can tackle the lack of diversity and, and create change themselves. So not just putting the responsibility on the young people but actually saying to the sector, these are some suggestions that we could do. Um, and yeah, this was actually launched at the Kerr um, Theatre here. Uh, so. And then the third project um, is a new one. Uh, it's called Middle Way Mentoring Project. And actually, if you're interested in this one, you can talk to Stevie. Stevie, can you raise your hand? So Stevie here is a colleague from Kami as well. And she's working on this with Fahana Shaik, who is um, a Leicester-based um, author and publisher. I don't know if you, if you know her. And this is also um, a project that's, um, that's looking at this idea of role models of mentorship in the sector. Um, it's uh, funded by the Arts Council. And um, it's a two-year professional development scheme for black, Asian, minority ethnic writers based in the Midlands. Um, they will receive mentoring for a period of 12 months um, from experienced writers and participate in different master classes and workshops. Uh, they will have opportunities for publishing, for submitting the work for prices, and um, what else? Yeah, bespoke coaching as well. And this is done um, in partnership with a number of organizations actually. So it's um, University of Leicester, Cameo, East Midlands Writing, uh, sorry, Writing East Midlands, Writing West Midlands, Dialogue Publishing, and Renaissance One. Well. Um, and then, in addition to this, we've been holding a variety of events outside of the university with the idea of engaging um, non academic audiences in Leicester. And examples of that are um, the launch of the BFI report at Phoenix. So I have some copies of that as well. Um, maybe I'll link them there with the links later. So this is um, a trifle that explains a bit about a report, a research report that Camille did on workforce diversity in the screen sector. And it was basically a review of all the information that's available for the sector and for policymakers to implement changes, what's missing, um, how the information can be used more efficiently, etc. And there was a launch um, for that report that, was, um, that took place in the field. Um, other events were the Let's Play Vinyl event at the Edinburgh Arts Centre, which um, was part of a project called Base Culture, uh, which visualised and explored the cultural roots of black music in the UK. Uh, and finally, since last year, we've also been hosting a series of events called Salons, um, which we discuss different aspects of cultural production in the creative industries, and we try to look at these issues from a social and political perspective. So we have addressed in different salons issues of inclusivity, of representation, of social justice, and some examples of that being a salon on arts and social change, and another one on grassroots publishing. So to conclude, um, 
What I hope I was able to demonstrate through these examples is that the barriers to diversity in the cultural sector are structural and ingrained, but there are a number of ways in which we can address them. Through research, we can understand a bit better how these barriers operate, how they are reproduced, and how they operate at different levels. So from the daily practices of the sector to the policy making. Um, through engagement with policy makers, um, because a lot of this research then tries to influence policy directly, uh, we can press for structural change, recognizing of course that there's some deeply you know, ingrained problems in our society that we not just solve through engaging with policy makers and culture, but that actually need uh, wider system of change. Uh, and through engagement with the sector, we can also generate tools and strategies for generating positive transformations in the sector practices now, while in parallel we also try to fight for those wider structural changes. Thank you. Thank you.